on this exciting episode of the Pixel Game Squad. You ready for this? What's in here? Right here with Snow Bros. Complete in box. This is the end of the swap meet, but it's the beginning of the video. Let me explain. Today I'm going to Ricky's house and we just got done with the swap meet. And you may be thinking, I thought you normally go to the swap meet. Well, I thought today we'd mix it up and go behind the scenes and show you what we got. You won't believe what's gonna happen today. Here we go. Um, as you see, I'm unloading a Technodrone right here, at least parts of it right here. Um, check this one out. How about this? Uh, vintage sewer layer. There's uh, plenty more coming, and I'll have to show you guys everything else. There is um, more than I can tell you guys with the, some of the rarest NES games out there and rarest Turtles toys. We're always going to the swap meet. We're always grabbing this awesome, amazing stuff, but we never go into detail where it actually goes, what it actually looks like. So this is normally what my car looks like after the swap meet every week is just filled with stuff. As you can see, I have a ton of toys, boxes filled to the brim, full of stuff, uh, consoles in here. I mean, look at this, literally just like, been sitting in here for a week and a half, like Halo edition Xbox 360s, just no time. Some of this stuff I clean, some of it I test. Some of them I play, um, just N64 console right here, no expansion pack, Astro Boy, uh, Jingle All The Way right here. I love this thing, by the way. It's the Jingle All The Way 76 turbo car. Freaking beautiful. Look at this, Looney Tunes with the Thermos. Yay, stuff. I mean, dude, look at half of this stuff. Half of this stuff is from there, and I, I feel like most of the time we came to show you guys the cool stuff we find because a lot of times, you guys don't realize that sometimes we buy in bulk, you do not get to see the coolest stuff that's in there. All right, so uh, I'll show you guys a lot of this stuff in a minute. This is crazy TMNT original stuff, but this is from a swap meet today. Check this out. This is also from the swap meet today. You ready for this? What's in here? Some of the most expensive, rare, uncommon, and even good NES games, which we'll get into. The reason we were inspired to do this is because so often we go to the swap meet and we buy so much stuff. I'll put in footage, or I'll have Jared put in footage of a YouTube short I put out where you can see our carts are full. And every week everyone's like, you guys do great, you guys buy so much stuff, but we never get to deep dive. Kind of look at some of this stuff, the condition, what it is, where it came from. So today, that's what we're doing. Ricky, what is that? What'd you buy? So this is, the, this is one of the NESs we got at the swap, but this is the stuff you don't see. Look how bad this is. So we have to clean these up, test them out, before we, we throw them on whatnot. Because, you know, I already have too many of these. But so for the audience knows, yes, why aren't you keeping this? Why is this going to whatnot? So it's go it goes to whatnot. It's, it's, we don't need it. It's, it's more like, you know, it, it's for fun. We, we, love, we love jumping in there, getting the deals. And honestly, I, I buy them because I always try to upgrade everything. So I might actually keep either this gun or this gun. Like, I'll buy a ton of stuff and keep what I want. What'd you pay for that NES with the with everything right there? I think it was fifty bucks with everything, which which, which isn't bad. Yeah, just just, the, just these two alone go for like I think fifteen twenty bucks. So I was like, all right, I I, I couldn't say no. It's not bad. It, it's not bad. So I'll test it out before anything, and you know, have it up for you guys. Oh, good puppers. That's a good doggy. Oh, look at her. That is a. I've never seen her dog do that before. So. Ninja Turtles. I, you, clearly what I'm saying is I don't know that much about Ninja Turtle toys. So Ricky was with me at the Swap Me when I found this. Ricky, I realized the wings go in this. Oh. I found these wings. This is probably the most curmudgeon of all of them. You can see it's like a TMNT gun and the pull action still works, but the inside of it is just janked. But why do I pick them up? Well, the reality is Ninja Turtles was a huge part of my childhood. It's a huge part of everybody's childhood. I feel like if you grew up 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, that dog loves us, and I love it. And so you guys know, I paid 
$250 for all of these turtles right here. All, it's, there's no actual Ninja Turtles. It's Turtles motorcycles. It's Turtles pieces. Oh, I just found out this is part of the Technodrone, which I didn't realize earlier. Look at this. You got things like this craft right here, which I think if, look at this, if you roll, it has some motion to it. Look at this one. I found this piece separated with this one and my dumb brain, even my dumb brain realized it's one piece. And it shoots little pizza shooters, which I don't have, but this is the kind of stuff that I love going through this. And again, I'm gonna go through more of this with you guys in detail, but I'm kind of going one bag at a time. To get, oh look, a hidden, another one. And I also found out, people were telling me, a lot of times these are missing, handlebars. So it's got the handlebars. So, so far, so good. Growing up watching the cartoon show was everything. Now I wanna make this clear because a lot of times when you collect things, some people are like, hey, you don't know that much about this. Maybe you shouldn't collect that. You gotta really know what you're talking about in order to collect certain things. But again, being a Ninja Turtle lover from the cartoon, from different, the movies even, just amazing. Again, growing up with the toys, but not being necessarily a Ninja Turtle toy connoisseur, I still find that joy in picking up this stuff. And that's why when you see this stuff, again, besides the nostalgia, you never know who's looking for it. Collectors, friends, people that want them, even yourself, maybe the inkling of desire to start a new collection that you may not have, always worth doing, always worth doing. I'm gonna do this because someone complained the other day that I'm always clapping. So you in the comments, suck this and make this your ringtone. So Ricky did tell me about this deal and it happened at the swap meet. I saw it happen, it was all there, it was all in place and what's funny is we posted our YouTube short about it and there were so many people that had doubts. And it's funny because we've been posting videos for 10 years of us finding stuff on camera and go figure one of the times we get something this big, we weren't filming that day because it was supposed to rain. But luckily, I had pieces from the short and also luckily, many people in the community were there when it happened. So we, we have that proof. Ricky, yeah, you gotta tell the people about this deal. How did this happen? All right. How did this part partake? <laughs> All right, so this is pretty cool. Uh, one of our buddies reached out on, on Instagram and he's like, hey, I got this, you actually mentioned a, a sign. And I'm all for the sign. He didn't have the sign at the, at, the, at the time right now, but he's like, dude, I got this sign. I'm like, yeah, dude, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's so cool. It's a great sign. We'll do a video on that later because we still haven't received it. But he's, he said he also had some games. I'm like, oh, sweet, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do some games. But when Ricky pulled out one of the games, it was the game I wanted to see him pull out, and that was Snow Bros. <laughs> First game I spot in here is an insane game that I've been wanting for a long time. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and how they take a different approach to breaking bad habits. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it, instead of bad, Fume is good. Fume is a habit that you're completely free to enjoy. Yes, it's a habit, but habits can be good and habits can be bad. Fume, good. Get it? Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting. Fume has also released new cores. Cores like orange vanilla, sparkling grapefruit, white cranberry, raspberry lemon, crisp mint, yum, and maple pepper. So I myself, I mostly use Fume as a fidgeter because when I'm editing or rendering out files, I'm always needing something to do with my hands while I kill some time. This is my movement to go to. Stopping is something we all put off because I get it, it's hard. But switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. Head to tryfume.com slash pixel or scan the QR code and use the code pixel to get 10% off when you get your journey pack today. That's tryfumefum.com and use code pixel to save an additional 10% off on your order today. God, it's, pay we paid up for this. I'm not gonna lie, we paid up for this, but it I, it was totally worth it. I I don't usually pay up for games, but What was this, the game, what was the game? Right here was Snow Bros. Complete in box, but it's clean. He, we did pay up a lot, but he also did hook it up. It was, it was a great, I, it was a no brainer. I'll never see this game for this clean like this from anyone else for that price. So I, I had to do it. 
Now this game came out in 1990 and it's a super fun game. Yes, it's popular, its popularity is huge, mostly for its price and desirability of collecting it. Most people go after this game, it's a talked about game in the collecting scene, but you gotta play the game. I'd say if you like Bubble Bobble, games like that, you're gonna really like this game. It's almost like a reverse Bubble Bobble where you travel up instead of down, you build big snowballs, you kick people over, over they die. It's simple, the gameplay is simple, but effective. Wouldn't say the music's my favorite, but it's still pretty good. Cute game, fun game, gotta get it if you can get it for a good deal. And as I always say, well, I've only said maybe for the past few years, if you gotta emulate it, emulate it. It's worth it. Freaking Snow Bros. Those are some really white guys. They would probably never make it on our show. Ricky, how do you say snow in Spanish? It's snow. That's definitely not true. Nieve. Nieve? Yeah. Hmm. Nieve, muchachos. But not only that, look at all this. We got uninvited. Th Dude, this is a great, I mean, it's cover art. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, that cover art is amazing. This one, this, this reminds me of Riff. Riff always talks about Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein. <laughs> but dude, just a ton of great games. God, you can't go wrong with the little earthworm gym. <laughs> so, wow, that was really awkward. So with TMNT figures, something I've learned too is that parts and pieces with vintage toys, yes, I've collected toys, but never in super detail, is pieces and parts can be super valuable. Check it out, I got a Cadillac, which I just now realized upon doing that is that you can push these in. I'm not sure exactly what that does. On the TMNT Cadillac, you got one of the choppers. I do have a bigger chopper over there, but you got this chopper right here. Look at this little wing too, by the way. It's, one, it's a little turtle, a mini turtle just spinning around. This one isn't in the best condition, but it's also not super bad, I wouldn't say. What else do we got in here? Oh, there's a couple like uh, crawler machines. I'm not sure exactly how you put these together. My brain thought that like you snap them together like this, but to be honest, I'm not, I'm not fully sure on that. More bikes. Look how cool this is one is with the Raphaels on there. It says Calabunga with a K. I never realized that. And then come on, you got a toaster that works on the back. Toast the foot is what it says. And what else we got? A motorcycle in here. It's not necessarily something I dive deep, in, deep into, but when I showed people that kind of stuff, they're like, yo, G.I. Joe, Transformers, He-Man, Turtles. When you find pieces of this stuff, you gotta hold on to it. Some other pieces, this is where the, um, the TMNT community is gonna have to come in handy for me because I don't know what a lot of these go to. So I kind of got to figure it out um, through the community, which is a big part of why I like videos like this. It helps us, you know, go a deeper dive and say, help me pop up like this. With this kind of stuff, you never know. Some of the stuff is worth good money too, but you just don't know. So there's so many loose and random parts that I kind of got to piece out and get figured out. You got to reach out to people that know what they're talking about because that stuff is going to be the stuff that people want and desire when they're looking for a little piece that can be worth more than sometimes the actual figures themselves. So. That's what you need to look for. A dramatic, cool shot of me walking away. Come and knock on my door. All right, so this this was pretty cool. My neighbor used to have this one, but this is technically the Cadillac that flies, you know, with the aliens, and it's meant to do that. Oh, there you Mickey, go. You said that's technically, and that's techno drone. Whoa. Whoa. God, I used to have so much fun with these. Did you really? Yeah. We're all so salty. Much. Double what I paid. You paid two dollars for it, right? Add five zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, for everything. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> Ooh, show me that Alien versus Predator, Ricky. This one brings back some good memories for me. All right, so when, I, when we saw that game, I honestly, it kind of, it got me emotional. I, it was the one, one of the win, one games I, I'd always get. The only p bummer part about it was it's only one player. It's not. Okay, so here's the thing. This isn't the arcade version. This is the Activision version. The Capcom version is the one everyone always sees like, oh, it's so great, so great. This one just is special to me because this is the one I used to rent at the game store. Okay, here's the thing. In my head, it was like a, such a great game, but I replayed it again. It's it's not as great as I remember it, but it's still fun. But it just, it takes me back to the living room. My dad had like this big screen that me and my brother and brothers and sisters used to play on. And it just, dude, it's so good. I, I don't know how to explain these memories. They're, they're just, you know, the great memories of you just being a kid eating Pizza Hut right there. Just, ah. Oh. Shit, here, take it out of the plastic. I want to see, see the game, bro. Video Sky was the name of your childhood place? Yeah, I used to call it Video Iski because I didn't know how to pronounce it. Well, you didn't know how to pronounce Sky, huh? 
That's a not a hard word to pronounce. <laughs> it was all together. It was like you know, it was like oh oh, oh it was like one word. It was one word. It's video iski. I was like, what's video iski? Hey, that looks nice. Dude, that's actually. a cleany weenie. This is oh my lord. I hate opening these. I feel like I'm gonna wreck them. So you I don't never have to do it. All right, thanks. <laughs> you know what sucks? What? I thought this was the good version. No. I thought this was the so, good version. Fun fact: this actually came out before the arcade did. Oh. It's really. I was like, oh. Because I remember playing the arcade at, like later, and I was like, oh, that's not the same game. Arcade's actually better. Good old Memoritos Ricky. My bad. <laughs> Alien, Predator, sci-fi's baddest boys together at last with a little time to kill. You're a predator on a planet infested with aliens. Are you okay, Ricky? Having a staring contest. Tell me about these, bro. These have been in your room for a while. A lot of people have not seen these. I know. two Mega Mario statues. Tell me about these. All right, so these, uh, a buddy of ours, I, I, I've been work, I had been working on him for a while, well, a while, like kept asking him about these statues because I've been wanting these statues for so many years. I still need a couple more to complete, but look at this beautiful N64 era, GameCube era, Mario. So cool, so amazing. It's so clean. This was the, he had a couple of them, but this was the cleanest one in his collection and I got it. And then he also had this 80s version. I think this is like an 89 version. I could be wrong, but big fat Mario. This is probably my favorite one because of, you know, he's fat. I love it. He's just like me. He's a happy Mario. <laughs> he's a happy Mario. But it's, dude, these are great. They're amazing. I still can't believe I got these. Unfortunately, Sonic and Tails had to go in order to make room for this, but Mario is Mario. Mario's great. I just. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's in the Mario corner. I mean, what else can I say? Look at this. If you, so much good stuff. So much Mario stuff. Holy cannoli, kids! I'm Mario, and I'm telling you, if you're not watching the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, you're gonna turn into a goon. Frankenstein on the NES is such an interesting game. First of all, the biggest thing to note is. Frankenstein is actually the monster in this, which is funny because horror snobs, you know that Frankenstein is not the name of the monster. Frankenstein is the name of the evil doctor or the doctor. So it's interesting in this game, it's like they either just wanted to call him Frankenstein to make him the monster or they literally didn't do any research and just figured the monster's name was Frankenstein. Man, Ricky, you got two games that are kind of related to scariness Nightmare on Elm Street, definitely the more known one, which everybody knows about. And I, there's no need to talk about in detail with that one. But it's the one we left over here, Frankenstein, man. The game gives off so much of a Castlevania tone and it's a fantastic game. There's only four levels in the entire game, but it's four brutally pretty hard video game. The colors are great. It gives a great atmosphere for a horror type game. Like I said, tons of Castlevania tones. I wouldn't say necessarily Ghosts and Goblins. Ghosts and Goblins tones was more of the cover and the box art, but a game worth playing, but it's gonna challenge you. You might need to pull out the Game Genie on this one. There's some good Game Genie codes on this that'll help you, but as far as what it is, fully, fully, fully recommend this game. And it's pricey. I wouldn't say it's wildly pricey. It's not one of the wild, crazy ones. It's not like Snow Bros or Samson. I would say if you can get it for anything, let, let's give it a price. 70 bucks and under, it's worth playing. 200 bucks and under, worth collecting. Maybe I hadn't even looked at the price. I probably should look at the price. Here, put the price right here. Wow. If you look at this game and you look at, it's almost like Ghost and Goblins looking the way it looks on the cover art. You got Frankenstein himself, which I'll explain. Frankenstein himself holding the, the princess, taking her captive. I never really looked at this. Frankenstein the Monster Returns as far as the box art. You know what else is interesting? If you look at this, I promise, Ricky, I won't ruin your games. It says game description. That's interesting that it's like calling it out. Like we all know this is the game description, but it's explaining on the back. For years, the monster lie in the grave and the villagers went peacefully about their business, trying to forget about the horrible nightmare. Days when he had spread terror throughout the countryside. For the years, the sun had seemed to shine brighter and the crops grew taller than anyone could ever remember. Surely their troubles were far behind them and life but was one blissful long walk through paradise. <sighs> you gotta love crap like this. Games nowadays, where, where's the love, man, for your, your art and the boxes and the style? Ricky, did you know that Monster's name was not Frankenstein? Be honest. Yeah, I did. Dang it, Ricky, you're smart. Hey, dog, it's Frankenstein. 
She licked me right in the up my nose. Good puppies. Oh, that's a good pup. Good pup. That's a good pup. That's a good pup. That's a good pup. Would you like one of my flowers? Huh. Ricky, something I wanted to kind of show the audience that you've you know you've had for a little while now that I think are just beautiful are your statues. Now you've got a few of these, you got two of them total in recognition for your support and dedication to Nintendo. And it's funny, so these are employee statues. These were given to employees for different things, for different types of recognition. Uh, there's another one over here, clearly a different Mario layout. The way they're standing is completely different. But it sounds like this one is straight up for their, it sounds like for their time being at Nintendo. This was someone named Miranda Johnson. If I was working, it would have been Long Johnson. Definitely like two inch Johnson, to be honest. <sighs> Looks more like Mario's nose right there. But these are super cool and shockingly heavy, Ricky. Like these are heavy items. Yeah, they're heavy. <sighs> How much do these go for? Do you know? Do you have any uh, price range? I don't know anymore, dude. <laughs> a lot, I'll just say a lot. Let's just say more than 50 cents for sure. When you buy this stuff in bulk, there's so much involved with cleaning this stuff, especially when you don't know what you're doing. I, I got all this turtle stuff, right? So this is actually one of the more awesome items. It's the helicopter that has like the snake head helicopter propeller. Super cool. Has one of the sides. You can see it has the punching gloves right here. I actually paid my friend's son, Andy, his son, Caden, to help me clean each one of these pieces one by one. Go on eBay, look up what goes where, Google scanning all these pieces. Where does this go? Oh my gosh. There was a lot of fun though involved with it. Like, oh my gosh, that goes with this. Oh, we, yes, it's part of the lair. Oh, I have this. It's so fun. It's interesting. The things that caught my eye the most, again, all this stuff, so much stuff, is definitely the two big pieces, Ricky. And check these out. It's the TMNT sewer lair. And I have to admit, when I got this, this was all taken apart. I didn't know what any of this was. I could be fully transparent, be real with you guys did not know this was a TMNT sewer lair. It was like every piece was off. Like this was this, this was taken off, the lid was off, these were separated. I didn't know, but that and the Technodrome. This I did know was parts of the Technodrome, but also there's so much risk involved in this stuff. And Ricky was literally telling me off camera a minute ago that when we do this stuff, there's huge opportunities for things not to work. And it happens way more often than we would like. It's a huge part of collecting. It's a huge part of reselling. It's a huge part of anything in this world of buying in bulk. Whether you're keeping, selling, flipping, playing with, displaying, there's so much involved with not working. I'd say there's 10 parts in the TMNT stuff I got that just don't work. When I bought in a ton of bulk last week, of Dusty's big lot, there was like 30% of things that just didn't work. That's part of it, it's part of the risk and there's part of the reward is that thrill of the hunt. You never know what, oh, I'm clapping again. I gotta learn to stop, I can't. And as again, as I mentioned earlier, I did know that some of this stuff can be super collectible, super, super valuable. And being in the world of what we do, I had to collect it for the boys, for the audience, for people and whatnot. Yes, I know we're not sponsored, but we still talk about it, it's part of our life. I know people in my circles that will need this stuff. There's people with like, dude, I need this. This goes inside one of the opening doors of the Techno Drone. It ends up closing and ends up locking in position like this once the doors are closed. People need that stuff. Turtle power, Ricky. You know where this goes? No. Right inside of this turtle figure. Oh. I can't stop myself. I literally just think I broke your thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Here you go, Ricky. Sorry, man. Thank you. Shredder could show up anytime, any place. Man, Leonardo, you are such a downer. So one thing that's really cool about Earthworm Jim is our buddy RJ that we've met, we've known RJ for a while now, but he literally did the design for it, the art design and everything for Earthworm Jim. So it's really cool to know the guy who was behind the, the just the perfection of Earthworm Jim. So this game does not get enough love. This game is beautiful. This is like, if you love Donkey Kong, you will love this game because it's it's that same style of graphics, not the same game, not even close to the same game. It's a shooter, but it's, oh my gosh, this game, it's comedy, it's everything. It's so good. It's it's like a shooter slash whip. Dude, I love this game. It's it's just so good. It's, it's a mixture of so many great games all in one. That's what it is to me. So I was just talking a minute ago about how like we buy so much stuff. You don't remember, you have to buy stuff, you clean stuff. 
Ricky literally just reminded me, those are my Super Nintendo games. I bought them. I literally didn't know because again, we buy so much stuff all the time. There's stuff, every, we can never keep up with it. We're not, again, I want to repeat this. We're not full-time resellers. We resell only on whatnot quick for like two hours of our lives each week. That's how long we're resellers. So this stuff, Ricky bought all of the Nintendo games. I bought the Super Nintendo games. Blackthorn, Earthworm Jim, Alien vs. Preddy. Preddy? Rocky Rodent. I forgot until this moment. You know how much happier I am right now in this moment realizing these are all my Super Nintendo games? <sighs> Thank you, Ricky. You could have literally scammed me and I wouldn't have remembered these are mine. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I think though, one of the coolest things I like about Earthworm Jim is the, the it, it's so perfect for when it came out. Like, right, it's right up there with like the Booger Mans, the Toe Jam and Earl, the, the funk of Earthworm Jim, Decap Attack. It's that whole like what they did in the 90s and what was super popular with funky, weird, fart, sound effects, just stuff that didn't necessarily make any sense, but it made all the sense in the 90s. Hey, isn't there, the dog is one of the main characters in Earthworm Jim. Yeah, you have to keep it safe, otherwise You're it'll beat dog. you up. You're the dog. Restart you. You're the dog. You're the dog in Earthworm Jim. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> she almost got the camera. Good grief. Dude, she really likes this. Look at that tail. She's, she really likes this. That's one happy dog. Ow, ow, <laughs> ow. Oh gosh, oh, oh, ooh, I haven't got this much action in a while. So I, I didn't point out that Magic Darts is sealed by Romstar. It's funny, I actually, I actually knew that before I looked, I promise you, I knew it was Romstar, which is a weird thing in my head that I knew that. It's sealed. I've said this before on Retro Rick's channel, it's a basic game. I wouldn't say it's a good game by any means, but two things to point out that are really weird. In this game, the characters you play as is like a normal person and then like a monkey and like an alien. No sense. Makes as much sense as this plane flying over my head. But one thing I point out on Retro Rick's channel, you gotta hear the music on this game. Super good music. Now, of Ricky's NES games, the biggest trickster of them all, Wally Bear and the No Gang. Why do I say that? This box art maybe some of the coolest box art that I've seen. This is like a t-shirt that I would have worn in the 90s. Like this is what you would have seen me wear. Awesome, you got a mouse in the window throwing a bomb. He's got no on his hat for the no gang. Just super sick skateboard shredding. Awesome. Biggest garbage game you've ever played. It is by far and large one of the worst NES games I'm playing. And no, that's just not me, you know. Uh, if, NES or ABGN syndrome or bad review syndrome where you take what you hear and repeat it. No. Stupid game, stupid music, nothing makes sense. You would think it's cool. You're skateboarding around as a bear, skateboarding bear in a level, but the game is actual hot garbage. And I rarely say that. Wow. Oh, I think they're called the no game because you say no to drugs. Because on a shirt it says say no. You know, to drugs, kids. Blackthorn's interesting because, as Ricky said, not a lot of people like it, but there are a lot of people that like it. It's one of those games where the cult following of people that love Blackthorn really love Blackthorn. Ricky, if someone was robbing your house right now, how would you shoot them? Dear God. Blackthorn, just like Blackthorn, dude. He has that no look shot, which is boom. Such a great game. It's. It's slow, I'll tell you that. It's slow in the meaning that he's not very fast and the action is slow. But as a viewer, I never got super good at the game. It has kind of like that Prince of Persia dynamics. I always forget what it's called, but it's a more bad to the bone version of that. My brothers love this game. So that's where my viewership of the game comes in. Always watch them play it. They loved the game and I loved watching but it. But it's a pretty cool game. It's one of the first games where you can actually dodge bullets. You go to the back like this, you're like, whoa, they can shoot and then you can go back and shoot. Shotgun, so good, and it's actually Blizzard, one of the first Blizzard games. This was way before, you know, Minecraft. I would like to say Minecraft. Minecraft. <laughs> you mean way before Warcraft? Uh, wow, that wasn't even. That wasn't even. That wasn't even Overwatch. close. I just remember the mellow tones of the music being so dry but also so powerful and serving what they need to serve. I think it's a great game. I wouldn't even say I wouldn't call it a fun game. 
It's just a good experience. You gotta play Blackthorn at some point in your life. Ricky just pointed this out. You don't ever realize too? It says, definitely one of the best games involving a guy with a gun. The fights are intense. It's like in every game, a guy with a gun. But if you look really closely, it's really hard to note. He's like semi cross-eyed. If you zoom in like super tight, he's like low key cross-eyed. I never realized that. What? You know that artwork? I'm pretty sure it's one of the Marvel guys that did it. Really? Yeah. I mean, I could see that. Hey, look at this guy back here. I never realized he's back there. Look at him. He's hiding out. He's saying, here I am, hiding out in the background. Also, it's by Interplay. Didn't Interplay do Clay Fighters? Yeah, they did. Did they really? Yeah. I'm not as dumb as dumb. Get him. Ew. Ew. There was a wasp over there, and I was going to take him out. Blackthorn, stop. Now I feel bad. Come here, puppy. Thanks for watching. Moral of the story today is you take risks when you buy a lot of stuff, but it's worth it. Oh, okay. Ricky, what'd you pay for your NES stuff and the Super Nintendo stuff? Just people asked. I'm trying to give an answer. Uh, 12 for the NES. And I paid like 270 for mine. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For my son.